Hello listeners. My name is Dr. Harshit Gupta. I am working as an interventional cardiologist in Lucknow and today we will be talking on the latest updates in hypertension. First of all, as per WHO, nearly 63% of the total deaths in India are due to non-communicable diseases, of which 27% are attributed to cardiovascular diseases, which affects around 45% of people in the age group of 40 to 69 years. Raised blood pressure is among the most important risk factors for cardiovascular diseases. Moreover, it remains poorly controlled due to low awareness about hypertension, lack of appropriate care through the primary health care and poor follow-up. As far as our India is concerned, the prevalence has also gone up over 30 years to 38% in men and 32% in women from just 29% and 28% respectively. This is according to the WHO criteria. Despite that, nearly half of the people or 51% of the men and 41% of women with hypertension are just unaware of their condition. Additionally, over 62% of the men and more than 53% of women living with hypertension do not even get treated. Medication was used to control blood pressure in fewer than one out of five men and one in four women with hypertension that is all over the world. The International Society of Hypertension has released the 2020 Global Hypertension Practical Guidelines. The inclusion of optimal and essential treatment paradigms attempt to address the issue that in resource poor settings. Optimal care refers to evidence-based standard of care, whereas essential standards refer to the minimal standards of care to allow specification of essential standards of care for lower resource settings. The American Heart Association has released a scientific statement in the 2021 offering new guidance for management of stage 1 hypertension among the patients who have a very low atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. Among the low-risk adults who have no atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk or their 10-year cardiovascular disease risk is less than 10% with stage 1 hypertension, management starts with non-pharmacological therapy and we can continue this till around 3 to 6 months. If the blood pressure remains still uncontrolled, then you can go on to start pharmacological therapy. In the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is a potentially fatal condition involving lung damage, experts often associate it with severe COVID-19 disease. A recent study which appears in the Journal of American College of Cardiology reports that a drug like metoprolol can reduce lung inflammation and improve respiratory function in patients who have COVID-19 induced ARDS. Lowering systolic blood pressure targets to less than 110 instead of 130 range substantially reduce cardiovascular adverse events. This was seen in the STEP randomized trial, which also confirms the findings of the SPRINT trial for an older Chinese population. Among some 8,500 patients aged 60 to 80 years in China, the intensive target trimmed 26% of composite cardiovascular risk. Findings from a now a second major trial supporting a lower target could unite the guidelines, which even among the US professional societies range from the threshold of 130 to 150. So we find that a lower target might still be even more beneficial than previous target of 130 and 140 systolic. With regards to prognostic value of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring and nighttime blood pressure, the 2018 European guidelines on the management of arterial hypertension recommend that the diagnosis of hypertension should not be dependent on office BP measurements, but also on out-of-office measurements, such as ambulatory BP monitoring and home BP monitoring. The 24-hour nighttime BP measurements were associated with greater risk of mortality and a composite of cardiovascular outcome. Thus, they may be considered as the most relevant measurement for estimating cardiovascular disease risk. For every 20 by 10 millimeter mercury increment of BP measured at night, the risk of mortality is increased by around 23% and the risk of cardiovascular events by 36%. Most patients with hypertension require lifelong medical therapy to achieve their blood pressure control. The 2018 European guidelines equally recommend five classes of antihypertensive drugs. Considering high non-adherence to the treatment, the importance of combination treatment is particularly highlighted to improve the adherence to therapy and BP control. Therefore, the European 2018 guidelines recommend, especially in the context of lower BP targets, to start antihypertensive therapy 
with an initial dual fixed dose combination of either ACE inhibitors or ARB with a CCB or a diuretic. Since early July 2018, products containing Valsartan have been recalled worldwide. The reason is the detection of a known carcinogenic, namely the NDMA, which can be found also in Candisartan, Irbisartan, Losartan and Olmisartan along with Valsartan. NDMA has been classified by the WHO International Agency for research on cancer to be carcinogenic in humans. If 1 lakh patients would have received NDMA contained Valsartan from Chinese manufacturer every day for 6 years in the highest dose, it could result in 22 additional liver cancers over the lifetime of these patients. The presence of NDMA in these drugs could lead to 8 additional cancer cases in 1 lakh patients if they had taken the highest daily dose over 4 years. Valsartan recall accompanied by a significant increase in the rate of emergency department visits by approximately more than 6%. The Hygia study represents the largest study that tested nighttime antihypertensive treatment. In this trial, chronotherapy was associated with a significant reduction in the endpoints. The Hygia chronotherapy trial tested whether nighttime therapy in comparison to the usual upon wakening hypertension therapy exerts a favorable cardiovascular risk reduction. The largest study included a total of 19,000 hypertensives. During the average follow-up of around 6.3 years, 1,752 participants experienced the primary cardiovascular outcome. An ambulatory BP measurement was performed for 48 hours to collect data on how BP differed during sleep. The relative risk reduction for cardiovascular events was significantly improved for nighttime treatment when compared with the awakening treatment. I hope these latest updates in hypertension will be helpful in your daily practice of management of hypertension. Thank you.